John Bolton, Donald Trump's former national security advisor. It's good to have you, sir. Uh, we hear from the White House that President Biden has decided what to do. I am very happy. Uh, they are not telling us what that is. Uh, so they should just do it. What do you think it's going to look like? Well, we can only try and parse the words of uh, administration spokesmen, what they've said since Sunday. And it sounds to me like it will be uh, an attack on the uh, Shia militia group that they think carried out the uh, the, ra the drone attack on, on Sunday. I, I don't think that's going to be enough. But again, we're speculating on what it could be. I think the real problem here is that the administration simply will not face up to the reality that we're seeing a war being conducted by Iran through terrorist proxies all across the Middle East. The administration is like uh, incapable of acknowledging that reality. And until they understand that fundamental uh, basis for this whole conflict, uh, almost anything we do will fail to deter Iran from continuing it. That's why and I think uh, that what's needed here is an attack on Iran. So when you say Iran, though, you don't mean Tehran. Uh, you mean finding military assets in the region that what you say show command and control. It's a meaningful distinction. Make it for us. Well, I I'm being very moderate here. I'm not proposing this time any strikes that could be considered regime threatening to Tehran. But there are substantial things that could be done that would send a message. There are, for example, Iranian naval vessels in the Red Sea aiding the Houthis in their effort uh, to close uh, the Red Sea to commercial traffic. Those ships can all be sunk. Uh, Iran has extensive air defenses along its side of the Gulf uh, and along its western border with Iraq. You could take out as many air defenses as you wanted because, frankly, that also paves the way for future strikes, and Iran knows that. And finally, on this first go-round, uh, our military has asked for a number of military facilities in western Iran uh, that have armed and trained the Shia militia, resulting in hundreds of American casualties over the years. Uh, they long advocated taking out those bases, and I think we should do it this time. Then we can see how Iran reacts. Uh, if they don't get the point, uh, then we go up and go up quickly. Right. Now, this has become a political football, of course, and there are many uh, in your party saying, and that's why we need Trump, he would keep us safe. The Middle East was calm when he was there, had the Abraham Accords, and people perceive him, rightly or wrongly, as a tougher guy than Biden and that Iran wouldn't be messing with us. You have your own concerns about how Trump would manifest himself uh, for America's interests. You have them in a new intro uh, for your book, In the Room Where It Happened, a very clever Hamilton reference, by the way. And in this new introduction, you outline new concerns. What are they? Well, it's true that Biden is weak. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And the Iranians have taken advantage of him. The problem with Trump is that he's totally feckless. Uh, and what he will do in any given context will rest not on a philosophy of international affairs because he doesn't have a philosophy, not on a coherent policy because he doesn't do policy as we understand that. It's based on what Donald Trump thinks will show him in the best light at any given time. Uh, he has blustered a lot about uh, how if he were president this never would have happened. Uh, but, of course, there's no way to prove that one way or the other. He has used force in the Middle East, uh, but he's also uh, shied away from it. So it's this uncertainty. Trump thinks it's a virtue. Uh, but our, our closest friends and allies worry about it because it shows the United States under Trump would be totally unreliable. This is a point that applies not just in the Middle East, but in Ukraine with respect to Taiwan and any number of other hot spots. You think he may walk away from situations that could cost America dearly? I think he has no sense of international strategy. He's remarkably uneducated. That's one of the things I try and show uh, in the book itself. Uh, and it's worth people going back and taking a look at it. If you want to be uh, contemplating what a second Trump term is like, mm -hmm. look at the first term and imagine it just like that, only worse. John Bolton, I appreciate the candor and I appreciate the perspective. 
conversation to be continued as we learn more about the facts and the reaction from the U.S. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.